How long will the sun live for? Well, to answer that question, we need to know a bit about stellar evolution. This depends on how big a star is and what it's made of. All stars start in a stellar nursery. This is usually a large cloud of dust and gas we call a nebula. Inside these beautiful and colourful clouds, in the dense regions, the gas collapses down into a protostar. As the gas collapses down under its own gravity, immense pressure and temperatures build up in the centre. These pressures and the extremely high temperatures can initiate nuclear fusion, though not all gas collapses will end up with a star. Sometimes there won't be enough mass, and a brown dwarf will be left behind. These are failed stars. Over about 100,000 years for large stars and 100 million years for tiny stars, more gas and dust will accrete onto the newly formed protostar until it reaches its final mass. This is where the star typically joins the main sequence. While a star is on the main sequence, the core is typically fusing hydrogen into helium. Depending on the size of the star, fusion can occur in different ways. For most stars under 1.5 solar masses, it will be the proton-proton chain. For for larger stars greater than 1.5 solar masses, it will be the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle. Our sun is a main sequence star. When most people think about how long the sun will live for, this is the section they are thinking about. Our sun is roughly 4.5 billion years old. Comparing the sun to stellar models, it is likely to end its time on the main sequence in 6.5 billion years. The higher the mass of a star, the shorter its lifespan on the main sequence. We can calculate the estimated time in the main sequence using this equation. So if a star is 15 times more massive than the sun, it will live for just under 11.5 million years. But what happens after the main sequence? Do stars just turn off? Well, no. Once the main sequence is over, stars typically run out of hydrogen in their core, leaving behind a core of helium with a shell of hydrogen still fusing on the outside. Smaller stars will have what is known as a helium flash as they start to fuse helium, whereas larger stars will transition into fusing helium much smoother. Once the core starts to fuse helium into heavier elements, we classify these stars into giants or supergiants depending on their mass. Giants will typically live for a hundred million years or so, while supergiants can be anywhere from a few hundred thousand years to around 30 million years. Stars have a few different ways they can end their life as a giant or supergiant. For low mass stars, typically they shed the outer layers of their atmosphere out into a planetary nebula and leave behind a white dwarf the burning core of the now dead star. Other times the giant may be in a binary system with a white dwarf which can leach the outer layers and become a type 1a supernova or just a nova. For more massive stars they like to go out in a bang as a type 2 supernova. Supernovas are extremely bright and can even be brighter than an entire galaxy. Once the supernova has occurred, the core will be left behind in the supernova remnant. This can be a neutron star, or if the star is truly massive, over around 40 times the mass of the sun, it will leave behind a black hole. 